Hey guys, welcome to Paint Along with Ms. Brenna. Today, we are going to be making wooden bead keychains, so let's look at the supplies. You are going to need wooden beads attached to dowels or toothpicks, elastic, a silver keychain ring, a metal bead, a container of Play-Doh, a paintbrush, and paint. You may also want a paint tray like I have um, or a paper plate will work just as well to mix colors. So here comes our solid beads. So I'm going to have uh, more beads than we will give you, but that's only because I'm going to be doing a few different styles today to show you how to do them. So we're going to start off with solid beads, which is what I do to all of my beads. Oh, and there's my cup of water already dirty from painting earlier. So I paint all of my beads solid beforehand. Um, obviously I'm not going to do that with the half painted bead but all the other ones so my three smalls i'm going to paint those with my three colors the pink green and blue so obviously a solid bead is going to be super easy because you're just covering the entire surface area with the paint um, you don't have to worry about getting it on the toothpick or the dowel because that's what they're there for it's just to keep the mess from getting on your fingers and keep you from smudging the paint. So I'm mixing up my green because it's a little dry there but um, so basically you just cover the entire surface. Um, you may need to do multiple coats depending on the paint that you use um, but really it's it's fairly self-explanatory for the solid colored beads. once you finish painting a bead go ahead and take the dowel or toothpick and stick it straight into the play-doh um, angled out a little bit so none of the beads touch and that's where it's gonna dry so just a little tip when you uh, clean your brush clean it all the way and use the sides of the cup that you're using to clean it um, and then when you dry it on the paper towel or your clothes, depending on if you have painting clothes, um, do it in a spinning motion so that you don't fan the brush out or make it lose any of its bristles. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed up me painting the rest of these solid colors.
course, when you're done, go ahead and set it inside the Play-Doh container. I'm trying to keep them spaced out evenly so it doesn't tip over. And you can see I've got them spaced all evenly around the outside so that it stays together but that they do not touch. So now we're going to be moving on to the half painted beads, which is well named considering we will only be painting half of the bead. We're going to start out with some masking tape or painter's tape. Um, scotch tape might work, I just haven't tried that, that yet. Um, and go ahead and wrap it around, just kind of eyeballing it. Um, use the edge of the tape to um, go around the entire bead. Sorry, my hand kind of disappearing from the camera here. Um, but make sure that all the edges line up when you put the tape back on. And then once it is completely around the bead, you kind of just scrunch uh, the top of the tape so that it covers the rest of the bead. You can see I'm adjusting it here. I'm just doing it by eye. It's obviously not perfect. You'll see when it's done. Um, but now I'm just kind of squishing the tape at the end so that it doesn't get all over the bead. And then now it is ready to paint. So obviously um, this is going to be just similar to the solid colored beads. Now that we've got the tape on, it's going to prevent it from getting on the other half of the bead. So go ahead and just cover the surface area like you would any just regular solid colored bead.
So once you're done painting, um, make sure that the tape is still in place and go ahead and set that off to the side so it can dry with the tape on. So certain colors are going to stick to the wooden bead better, um, especially the lighter colors you're going to have to be doing multiple coats. Um, so here I am doing multiple coats of um, some of the lighter shades. Um, it's completely your preference of how many coats of paint you want to do, how opaque um, or not see-through. The paint is going to be you will still be able to see kind of the wood grain underneath if you do not put multiple coats on Moving on to our dash beads. Um, I made these dash beads because um, I had originally intended on doing stripes, but I just decided that um, doing dashes would be way more fun, um, a little more modern, and kind of whimsical. So you're obviously welcome to practice um, your strokes on the paper beforehand, um, and I kind of do that here for you um, just to kind of get an understanding of how the paintbrush moves um, when you go to paint on it. Um, now that we're painting um, not just solid color, you're going to have to be very careful about how you hold your hands. Um, I always like to anchor my hands when I paint. So here I'm doing dashes and I'm doing them almost kind of in a brick style where they overlap, um, but they do not uh, lay in the same spot as the dash above and below. Um, so obviously it's yeah it's very much like a brick style. And then um, so I practiced here feeling fairly confident. So I'm gonna go right in and start on the bead. So I'm anchoring both of my hands down onto the paper underneath. And instead of moving my brush, I'm moving the bead. That's why I like to put them on the dowels because you can move them very easily. Um, keeping your painting hand anchored is like a huge deal um, to keep semi-straight lines um, or keep on anything that you have um, kind of drawn out. So I go ahead and go through here. I'm checking to make sure my lines are decent. Um, and then I go ahead and fill the rest up with blue dashes.
So now that I finished with the blue dashes, I'm going to go ahead and set this off to dry. Um, I don't want to put any other paint on there that might smudge the dashes that I've already drawn. So I'm going to leave that up to dry and I'm going to go ahead and check my half painted bead. Um, I can see that it might need another coat or so um, since green is kind of a light color. So I do a second coat on the bead while that's dry. So I will actually come back um, and do some other color dashes on the dash bead, um, but obviously I wanted to make sure that the blue dried first before I came back with other colors, so stay tuned for more colors. So we're going to do the polka dot or mandala beads. Um, these were super fun to make, but they can definitely be challenging. Um, so if you've never seen mandala, um, they tend to be like on rock painting mandalas, um, are all polka dots. So, um, instead of using my actual brush, which you're very welcome to use, I used the end of my brush, um, so that I could get a better control and make sure that my bristles didn't bend while I was trying to make the dots. So I practiced a little bit on my paper. Um, realize that you're definitely going to need to um, put more paint on like every one or two dots. Um, so I go ahead and just start in the middle. Um, remember I'm anchoring my hand and moving the bead in my other hand. I'm going back for more paint. And that way I can keep it pretty um, symmetrical all the way around the bead. And then um, I kind of decided that I liked the way that the big polka dots looked, but I liked it even more when I put smaller polka dots between the larger polka dots. So you can see me kind of go through and do that. So since we're using the end of the brush and not the bristles, I just kind of wiped it off on a piece of paper towel, make sure it was completely clean from the regular paint that I was using, and then I went on to a different color. Um, and I of course did um, kind of the almost brick pattern where they're not in the same spot as the line below and above, so kind of overlapping in a zigzag pattern. And I decided to make it symmetrical, so I decided to do blue above and blue below.
cleaning the tip of my brush again. I'm going in with the purple um, or pink this time and I'm doing another line just beyond the blue um, and keeping it symmetrical. I'll do another line of the purplish pink on the other side of the bead as well, still doing the very small dots between the larger polka dots. going um, I came back with the green and made some more polka dots towards the end obviously I was running out of room um, so I didn't need to put nearly as many dots along the top as I would around the center of the bead So here's what it looks like. Obviously, um, they're not perfect circles, but I kind of think it makes it look a little more whimsical that way. I really enjoyed making this one. I would definitely make more like this. So go ahead and put it back into your Play-Doh container, being very careful. And now I'm going to check on my half-painted bead. I think about this time, it's probably good with paint. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the tape, make sure that it doesn't dry completely to the tape. And then if that happens, you start to get tearing along the edge of the paint. coats of paint depending on 
how open it is. So now we're going to come back to the dash beads. Now that the blue has dried completely, I'm going to go ahead and wash off my brush and go in for the green and the purple. So I'm going to do the green and the purple between the blue lines, um, alternating between green and purple. So this way I don't need to wait for the green to dry before I can go ahead and go in on the purple as well trying to stagger these as well um, along the blue lines. up the purple um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what it looks like when it's finished um, those are my dashes definitely pretty cool looks kind of like sprinkles um, or maybe like some watercolor paint very fun to do I enjoyed that and go ahead and put that back in your play-doh container um, by this point some of your solid color beads um, that you're not gonna be doing anything else on are gonna be dry so I went ahead and pulled those out of my Play-Doh container just so that they wouldn't get accidentally bumped by anything else that was going to be painted. So now onto floral beads, which are uh, kind of intermediate level here. I try to make them as easy as possible to um, recreate so I didn't get too fancy here. Um, obviously when you're painting an actual thing onto a very tiny, tiny, tiny surface, it's very hard to do. Um, there are super tiny paintbrushes that you can use, but obviously we've just got the one size today. So I started out by kind of just doing um, like a smudgy circle 
um, not perfect, it's got some rough edges, maybe some places where it's not exactly circular, um, just something to look more like a flower than a circle. And then I went ahead and repeated that all over the bead, um, trying to leave everything spaced evenly around the entire surface. Um, even on the top, you'll paint like ones that look like half flowers. Um, don't be afraid to paint over the hole. Just make sure you don't fill the hole with paint or else it will seal itself and you won't be able to get the elastic through later. So this is what my funny circles look like, um, almost like cow spots and circles. Those are going to be our flowers. So the next thing that I'm going to do after cleaning off my brush is I'm going to start making the leaves. Um, so obviously I have green to do this. If you don't have a green, um, you can do it whatever color you want. Honestly, it's your creation do whatever you want with it um, otherwise if you have access to paints you can make green by mixing some colors um, or buying your own you can find them fairly cheap at craft stores so now I'm going ahead and doing leaves and the way that I do that is by pushing the brush down a little further um, right at the edge of the flower and then as I pull the brush away from the flower I lighten the brush stroke so that way it's very thick looking at the end of the flower and very thin the further away it gets um, in a point just like leaves do. your brush starts to get kind of smooshed um, get it wet um, try to point it with your fingers like that you can either um, kind of rotate it in your fingers while you're doing that to help keep the point um, the thinner the point at the end of your brush um, the thinner and uh, less messy your lines are gonna look so the next thing I did was um, I wanted to kind of simulate petals so I went ahead and took my purpley pink um, and I made two kind of little squiggly C's on either side of the flower. Um, obviously this isn't a great representation of a flower, but it gives kind of that emphasis that there are three dimensions to this rather than just it being a flat circle. Or cow spot, I guess. So 
the next thing I'm going to do after I obviously clean my paintbrush is I'm going to use the end of the paintbrush like we did for our polka dot mandalas. And I use black, but use whatever colors you have on hand. And then I use the end of my paintbrush to kind of make just a single dot in the center of the flowers. So you may like the way that it looks now. Um, at this point I realized that I didn't like all that extra white space. So I wanted to put another set of leaves on each flower. And I was much happier with the way that this looked. Um, less white space, more color. Now anybody who knows the ladies down in the youth department knows we love our galaxy themed stuff. So of course I had to do a galaxy themed bead. This is gonna be the most time consuming bead that we have um, just because of all the different steps that it takes. Um, so obviously if you're gonna wanna do a galaxy bead, you are gonna need black and white paint. Um, so you're gonna cover your entire bead in black first. Make sure it's um, as opaque as possible, as non-see-through as possible. And then once that's dried, you're going to go ahead and take a tissue and kind of ball it up. Um, if you have a sponge, that will work just as well, but this is an easy hack for anybody who doesn't have a crafting sponge. So once I bunched it all together, I went ahead and grabbed my first color, which I used the blue. And I dipped it in to make sure that it was covered fairly decently on the front um, and then obviously you don't want a ton of blue on there so I dabbed it on my piece of paper until I started to see um, more white on there um, which means that the paint is coming off and then I went ahead and dabbed it directly onto the bead this kind of gives it like a smoky blue effect rather than being like super thick paint So this is what it looks like with the blue on there and then so you're gonna move it so obviously you don't have blue on there and I moved it to a different spot and went ahead and bunched it up again and then I put it into the pinkish purple paint that I have and repeated the process directly over the blue
can be hard to see from far away. So here's a close up so you can see how the blue and the purple kind of overlap on the black. So now that you've got your two colors on, and if you're doing multiple beads, go ahead and do all your beads first before you start on this next step, is we're going to be putting the white splatter or stars onto the bead. Obviously, I didn't have a toothbrush at the library, but we did have a firm bristle paintbrush, so I went ahead and used that. Um, you definitely want something that's firm enough um, that it's not going to just completely bend over when you press on it with your finger. Um, so I'm softening at the ends just a little bit here. So there's two different methods that you can use to make the stars. The first one is going to be um, putting the bead in front of you and then painting directly onto your finger um, so that the splatter comes off of the paintbrush as it leaves your finger. So you can see the pinkish purple paint having the white splatters and that one is going to be pretty messy for you. Um, they're both messy but this one uh, involves you painting directly onto your fingers. And here you can see um, if you use just your regular brush that we've provided using this method. Um, it can actually sometimes create um, long spurts like that um, that almost kind of look like meteors um, or shooting stars. So if you really like that kind of look, um, this method is great for you. But if you prefer more of the very, very tiny splatters, um, just stars, you're gonna wanna go ahead and use a much bigger brush like I had earlier. So here I set the bead down on its side, um, and being inside of the Play-Doh, it's going to keep it off of the paper, um, but this gave me a great angle to be able to get the bottom of the bead when I did the splatters, um, and being in the dowel firmly in the Play-Doh should keep it completely off the paper so you don't have to worry about um, it smudging. So the second method is going to be for people who have a toothbrush, which I didn't hear, um, but it's going to be ultimately um, the same thing except instead of um, painting directly onto your finger, you're going to dip the toothbrush into the white paint and then um, drag your thumb down the bristles of the toothbrush, um, which will flick the white paint onto the bead. Um, it's a little more of a dragging motion than a painting motion. Um, and unfortunately I didn't have a toothbrush to show this, um, but you can easily find it on YouTube. So here's the finished look and you can see the piece right there that almost looks like a shooting star or a comet. But there's all the little tiny stars and planets in the galaxy. So now that all of my beads are painted, I'm going to remove them from the dowels once they've dried. Um, it's very easy to do. If they're completely dry, just make sure your fingers are dry as well so you don't put more paint on them. You're just going to twist very gently on either the bead or the dowel or toothpick inside and it should just pop free. And you can see that the smaller ones very easy they just come right off and if you can't seem to get it to come off twist in different directions not just in one direction and it should come off
you're like me and you're going to be doing a lot of projects or you want to just make a lot of different wooden beads, definitely keep the dowels and the toothpicks once you take them out because they can be reused over and over once the paint dries it won't get on any of the other beads that you make so finally we've reached the point where all of our beads are ready to assemble um, for anyone who wanted to cover their beads in like polyurethane um, or a clear coat this is the time to do it um, and then assemble once that is dry but I didn't have any of that, so I was going to go ahead and just assemble it as it was. First thing you might want to do is to take your beads and decide how you want the layout to be. So how do you want them arranged on the keychain? Um, I knew that I wanted them to be in a big, small, big, small, big, small pattern. So I was already fairly sure of how I wanted them to look. So what you do with the elastic is you're going to center the ends together so that it becomes completely symmetrical even on both ends and then you're going to take the looped end and put it through your silver key ring and you're going to do one of the knots where you put the loose ends through the looped end and then pull the loose ends through until it tightens completely onto the key ring I like to kind of situate it just in that groove um, where the two ends don't really meet um, just so that it's even and it doesn't stick out but see you can see it's very symmetrical that way you know you're gonna get the best length out of your elastic by doing this so then once you have all of your beads set up you know what kind of um, layout that you want them to have you can start um, putting them onto the elastic. Make sure you put both pieces of the elastic through the beads. And at this point, I kind of set it up um, for my layout. And definitely do it however you want. Play with it. Um, see what colors look best together. Um, maybe do an ombre or something where you don't keep any of the colors together. Um, it's just totally up to you. So I'm threading on all of the beads. They should fit perfectly together with the elastic that we've provided. You can see our half painted bead right there. Making sure that both pieces of the elastic go through. And there's our mandala polka dot bead. And then lastly with another solid bead. So now once we've got those through, you can see it's time to tie. However, it's very difficult to make a knot big enough that it won't slip through the center of the beads. So that's what this silver bead is for. Now the hole is very tiny and it does not leave a lot of room for both pieces of elastic to go inside. So you're only going to thread it through one piece of elastic. You see it's on one side of elastic and then you're going to knot it as many times as you want. Um, I think I did mine somewhere around 10 or 12 times. Um, I just like to be very certain that it's not going to just fall apart because that would be absolutely devastating to lose my keychain after I spent so long putting it together. So I tied it many, many times. So now that it's all tied, you can see there's kind of the little tail hanging off the end. Um, trim it to whatever length you feel um, is right for you. I know some people might like it longer, some people might like it a little shorter. It's just completely your preference. I like having a little bit of tail on there just in case um, it tears or something. I'm going to have um, some extra elastic to work with, but you can see you can stretch it really easily. Um, super cute to make 